I will be speaking about national security of India. National security or national defense, broadly speaking, is the security and defense of a nation, including its citizens, economy, and institutions, which is considered as the duty of the government. National security was originally conceived as protection of a nation against milita uh, military attack by outside forces. Now, national security is widely understood to include also non-military dimensions, including the security from terrorism, minimization of crime, economic security, energy security, environmental security, food security, cyber security, etc. Threats to the national security include, in addition to actions of other state, nation, states, actions by violent non-state actors, by drug cartels, and by multinational corporations, who has political interest to disturb and destabilize the targeted nation. Another serious threat of national security is national disaster, which includes tsunami, floods, earthquakes, storms, etc. National security systems. Governments rely on a range of measures to have sound national security which include political, economic, and military power, as well as diplomacy to safeguard the security of a nation. The measures are also extended regional and international measures aiming to reduce transnational causes of insecurity, such as climate change, economics, inequality, political exclusion, and even nuclear proliferation. In India, the national security setup is headed by the National Security Council, Rastriya Suraksha Parishad of India, which is an executive government agency responsible with the task of advising the Prime Minister's office on matters of national security and strategic interest. The National Security Strategy, NSS, is a document prepared periodically by the executive branch of the Government of India, which outlines the major national security concern of India and how the administration plan to deal with them. Challenges. India faces a very challenging strategic environment with its immediate opponents possessing significant capabilities and military strength that are modernizing rapidly. Here we briefly discuss the opportunities, challenges, and constraints confronting the Indian state in building its military strength to deal with its variegated threat environment. We examine how India has dealt with the use of force and how it seeks to shape its armed forces in the face of new threats and emerging capabilities. We discuss six key areas of inquiry and is correspondingly structured. First, how does the Indian state view the use of force? Second, what has the Indian state's recent experience been with conflict and to what extent has it influenced its thinking? Third, how does the Indian state view the future character of conflict? Fourth, with what conclusions has India drawn about the role of alliance and strategic conflict it faces? Fifth, how does the Indian state intend to configure its forces to deal with this evolving nature of conflict. 
Lastly and sixth, what do all these factors mean for its defense acquisition? For example, we have a recent acquisition of Rafale jet fighters in the country. As an emerging power, India has to contend with these questions and the measures it has put in place are still a work in progress. The remain, there remains a fundamental need for greater integration across the Indian security sphere. In inter-service arrangements, in procurement processes, in procurement processes and in broader strategic thinking and planning. Challenges we continue. There are numerous challenges to the national security of India and the extent and scope of the threats are complex, varied and vast. Perhaps India is the only country in the world that confront us many threats with with as much with as much intensity at the same time. Overall, more than fifty percent is affected by threats that are not just law and order problems. There have been increasing external dimensions belying conventional wisdom that internal security threats are caused mainly by internal sources. The poor internal security situation is a result not only of India's unfavorable strategic environment, but also due to weak internal security mechanism especially the criminal justice system. It is appropriate that corrective measures are taken that the threats, if not the threats may result in the gradual degradation of the country. It is suggested that new steps of policies and mechanism in diplomatic economic, military, political, and socio-cultural arenas are implemented. Internal disturbances. Before we discuss the external threats which the country confronts to national security, it is vital to identify the enemy within and set one's own house in order Numerous socio-economic, communal, and religious conflicts exist in the country. The Indian society and gradually forging unity in a diverse society, especially where conflicts generate violence, is a no mean task. Different communities fiercely assert their caste identities, leading to caste wars, caste wars. Thanks to the politics of quota reservation, massive social religious reforms are needed to exterminate caste distinctions and bring about peace and harmony in the country. Growing unemployment and widening economic disparities cause social tensions and conflicts. The phenomenon is accentuated by privatization and globalization, where the rich become richer and the poor poorer. This situation is exploited by different leftist extremist organizations like Naxal Maoist outfits who are fast spreading their network with indiscriminate killing of civilians and security personnel. Maoist outfits activities is another serious concern. Vast Indian territory of Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, 
Maharashtra, Orissa, Bihar, Bengal, Chhattisgarh are reeling under the spell of Maoist outfits activities. <clears throat> Central and state law enforcing agencies with the intelligence networks are doing their best to manage the crisis, but success is a desire to the magnitude of the menace which is being caused. Illegal migration. Influx of illegal migrants from neighboring porous Bangladesh border is a matter of serious concern for the northeastern states. Assam is worse affected and the rapid population growth of the illegal migrants is alarming. Other northeastern states of Meghalaya, Tripura, Mizoram, Nagaland, Arunachal Pradesh, Sikkim, and also West Bengal are gravely influxed by the illegal migrants. The government's promulgation of NRC, National Registration of Citizens, is a welcome measure to check and prevent worsening of the situation of the influx. Cross-border threats. Most of the external threats of India emanate from an unsettled boundary dispute with China and ongoing cross-border jihadi terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir sponsored terrorism supported by ISI and Pakistan-based Islamist fundamentalist organizations. Like Laskari Toiba and Jais E. Mohammed, who in turn are extricably linked with international jihadi groups like Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and ISIS. Threat from Bangladesh assumes a serious dimension since it is a base for Northeast insurgent groups like Naga factions, the Alpha of Assam, PLA, Pripak, etc. of Manipur, and other Northeastern insurgent outfits. Of late, Bangladesh also has been serving as a conduit for ISI sponsored infiltration of terrorists along India and Bangladesh's porous borders. To cap it, nuclear threat from neighboring countries and jihadi groups cannot be ruled out as these countries have potential of using nuclear weapons in the foreseeable future. Significant being in China and Pakistan nuclear nexus. I will also be briefly touching on the security scenario of my state, Mizoram. Of late and in the recent Recently, we have border tensions in our border with Assam. Mizoram says 123 kilometers border with Assam in the Barak Valley region, which includes the three districts of Assam, namely Kachar, Hailakandi, and Karim Ganj. The borderline in these areas with Mizoram is conflicting. There are contradicting contentions of the borderline. Now we have seen that there has been law and order problems and tensions in these border areas. We have in the north west, northeast, or, and in the north, 
border with Kachar districts. It is affecting the national security as well. It is high time that the government and the central government and the state governments make efforts and take serious steps to settle these disputes peacefully. On the crime front, Mizoram is predominantly a peaceful state. The statistics of crime rates reveals that over the past two years, though the crime rates is on the higher side, on the increasing trend, the increase from 2000 to, uh, 2018, where we have 2,388 cases registered against 2019's record of 2,884 cases registered. Drug trafficking is another serious menace which the state faces. I have uh, statistics of the seizures of 2018 where there are 161 cases registered, 209 people arrested, and heroin seizures is 12.85 kilos, and ganja seizures is, amounts to 89.6 kilos. And in 2019, number of cases registered as slightly reduced to 158 cases, 201 persons booked. Heroin seizures also has, incre has decreased to 10.59 kilograms and ganja seizures, of course, is on the rise where we have 148.29 kilograms seizures. Mizoram is infamously popular for guns running. As we are aware that we have an international border with Myanmar and Bangladesh. With Myanmar we have 512 kilometers long porous borders which is manned by the Assam Rifles and with Bangladesh we have 300 13 kilo, uh, kilometers, which are manned by the Border Security Force, BSF. The arms which are moved from across the country, that is Myanmar or Bangladesh, finds their way to the, through Mizoram and are marketed in the other parts of the neighboring states. Interstate borders with other states of the country. Mizoram says interstate borders with Assam, which, has, which is 123 kilometers long in the Barak Valley region, which comprises of three districts of Assam, namely Kachar, Karimganj, and Hailakandi. Manipur, 95 kilometers long, and with Tripura, we share 66 kilometers long border, interstate borders. These interstate borders are guarded and manned by our own state forces of Mizoram Armed Police or the India Reserve Battalions. In conclusion, I would like to make an appeal to all the viewers and all the citizens of the country that national security is not only the concern of the stakeholders or the concerned officials or the concerned authorities. It is the concern of all the people of the country. So, my appeal is, let us wake up and we understand the vitality of national security. 
the absence of which can be a degrading, can degrade the security of the country, our beloved country, India. Thank you.